Hello, I'm Betty Vandenbosch, Coursera's Chief Content Officer, and I'm delighted to spend time with you today at QS Apple 2020. I'm going to discuss the digital transformation of education, where it's come from and where I believe it's going. Traditionally, learning has been remarkably linear. Students needed new skills, they investigated institutions of higher learning to determine the one that best met their needs. And then they attended that institution to study and obtain a credential to verify that they'd learned the skills they were looking for. Employers who relied on educational institutions to verify the learning hired students who successfully completed the education. Today, education is moving toward a system where learners, educators, and employers interact over time rather than in a once and done fashion. In fact, in the United States, fully one third of university students graduate from a different institution than they started at. And people change not only employers, but careers many times throughout their working lives. They often go back for more education too. One student, one university and one employer is long gone. At Coursera, we have more than 75 million learners and more than 200 partners who provide thousands of learning opportunities to our learners. In addition, we have more than 6,400 enterprises comprising universities, companies, and governments providing our partners education to their stakeholders, be they students, employees, or citizens. As you can see, our 75 million learners come from across the globe. And in fact, the fastest growth right now is coming from Asia, South America, and Africa. Of course, a great deal of the recent growth is the direct result of responses to COVID around the world. Nearly three quarters of a billion students are still learning online nearly a year after the beginning of the pandemic. At Coursera, we've experienced unprecedented growth and that growth is not slowing down. We thought that it might, we thought there'd be a peak and then it would tail off, that hasn't happened. Since March, we've had 460% more enrollments than last year. Many of our learners come back time and time again as their learning needs evolve. This year, however, there are also seven times more new learners on the platform than there were a year ago. The Asia Pacific region is seeing especially rapid growth in online learning since COVID with over 32 million enrollments since mid-March, and enrollments from learners new to the platform up over a thousand percent. Some of the most popular courses in the Asia Pacific region span job relevant topics like machine learning and programming, mental health courses like the science of well-being, which frankly has been incredibly popular across the globe. We all need a little more well being right now, and even a beginner level course in learning the Korean language. This is a time for resilience in higher education. Global partnerships help build resilience among higher education institutions during the pandemic, and lessons learned can help inform the future. I'd like to take you through a few examples, if I might. Our Coursera for Campus response initiative helped universities go online quickly amid widespread campus shutdowns. We offered the entire Coursera catalog for free to students around the world with wonderful results. The initiative was inspired by Duke Kunshan University. They came to us to enable free access to their content for students in China after the campus there shut down. Duke created a fully digital experience for nearly 600 students within just three weeks. And that sparked the idea for our Coursera response initiative. Today, 
3,700 higher education institutions are being served worldwide. You can see they're from the Americas, from EMEA, Europe and the Middle East, and from India and the Asia Pacific. And the results, 2.6 million students have enrolled, 22 million courses, and 70% of the students used mobile to do their learning. In just nine months, we've grown from 30 universities using Coursera for campus to over 3,700, as I just said. Universities from Kenya to Kentucky, Bangladesh to Boise State. I wanna give you a couple of examples. Symbiosis International University is one of India's leading institutions providing quality education for over 30 years with 37 academic units spread across nine campuses and a student population of more than 18,000. Symbiosis is partnering with Coursera to support education in management and law in order to help develop the critical skills students need to prepare them for the world of work. Yonsei University, one of our partners in South Korea, is embracing our campus response initiative as well. Over a thousand students have enrolled in more than 6,000 courses, totaling nearly 12 million learners, so, sorry, 12 million learning hours so far. Digitization enables universities to collaborate much more than in the face-to-face -face world. And universities want to collaborate to reduce cost without reducing the responsibility of local faculty to manage their own classrooms. Offerings like Coursera for Campus help enable this digitization for universities everywhere. And now at Coursera, we're introducing Coursera for Campus Basic, a long-term free solution for universities and colleges around the world. Students will be able to try Coursera, do some projects, and universities will be able to augment their face-to-face -face learning. Another example of what happened during the pandemic. Johns Hopkins University was quick to respond to the pandemic as well. As governments form plans to limit the spread of the virus, the need for public health training at scale quickly became very, very clear. On May 11th, JHU launched a free course on Coursera, COVID-19 contact tracing, to help governments expand their contact tracing capacity by training thousands of people. Taking the course and passing the exam at the end is a requirement to be considered to be a contact tracer in the state of New York. This course has also been translated into Spanish and Portuguese to help international governments increase contact tracing efforts. It's a terrific example of how technology and academia can come together to solve an urgent public health need. And we're so encouraged by the response to this course. Contact tracing can offer meaningful employment to those affected by the economic downturn. If all goes well, however, we won't need contact tracers forever. I sure hope that's the case. As these learners now have experience with Coursera and have developed comfort learning online, they can use the ability to learn upskill or reskill in another area. Courses like contact tracing provide people with the self-efficacy they need to expand their education horizons. One of the key elements of the digital transformation of higher education is the, is the need to meet learners where they are rather than providing them with what higher education has always provided. Online learners are older, they've got less time, and they're more focused on exactly what they need, not just on what's available broadly. Over the last five years at Coursera, we've dramatically expanded our portfolio of learning products to meet the different learning needs of all our learners. First, a course. A course typically takes a few weeks to complete. They include recorded video lectures, auto-graded and peer-reviewed assignments, and community discussion forums. When they complete a paid course, learners earn a shareable electronic course certificate. 
Specializations are one level up. Learners enroll in a specialization to master a specific skill. They'll compete a series of rigorous courses, tackle hands-on projects, and earn a specialization certificate to share with employers and their professional network. Some shorter specializations include as few as three courses and take only a few months to finish. Longer specializations can include 10 or more courses and take up to a year. Two types of certificates. Professional certificates are training programs from top companies and universities that help learners become job ready. Some professional certificate programs prepare learners to pass an industry certification exam, while others help them to get the experience needed to launch a career in a specific field, perhaps IT support. Typically takes a few months to complete a professional certificate, depending on the program. Master track certificates split master's programs into modules so that learners can affordably earn a university issued career credential online within a few months. Learners benefit from real world projects and live expert instruction. If a learner is accepted to the full master's program, their master's track certificate counts towards the degree. And at the pinnacle, of course, are degrees. Not just at Coursera, but in many places, learners can earn a high value degree from a top university, giving their career a permanent boost. Degrees provide highly flexible and affordable learning that help learners earn the same credentials as students who attend classes on campus. Master's degrees take anywhere from 12 to 36 months to complete. Undergraduate degrees a little bit longer, depending on the program and the learner's previous experience. At Coursera, we recently added guided projects. To get hands-on experience with a specific tool or skill, learners can enroll in a project. Now, a project is really small. It typically lasts from just a few minutes to a little over an hour and includes instant access to a pre-configured cloud desktop containing all the software and data needed to complete that project. I know I've struggled, and I'm sure many of you have as well, when you're trying to learn something new and you've got to download the software and you can't get it right and you don't know how to do it and then you've got to look in two places and it's just a big mess. Guided projects get rid of that mess. Individually, these learning types appeal to different people and different learning needs, wherever learners are on their journey. Collectively, this represents a diverse and stackable system of learning. There's a great article by Matthew Raskoff from Duke and James Devaney from Michigan at, on Inside Higher Ed about the benefits of stackability. Stackability is key to helping learners in our digital world. And it's also key to how Coursera works. MOOCs become the gateway to degrees and enable stackable recruiting and learning. Learning helps everyone from the learner to the institution. One example of stackable learning is a gateway certificate. This is how stackability works in practice. The example I'd like to share today is our Google IT certificate. This certificate has been uh, taught to more than 340,000 users, 340,000 learners, now know these skills. But they didn't just learn the certificate. For many of them, a certificate is not enough. People who need beginner learning in a particular area also need to support the support required to learn how to work. We've got workforce support helping people taking the Google certificate, at least in the United States. We also have many employers who take folks who have learned the material from the Google IT certificate and passed it successfully into their organizations. So the Google cert enables someone with no previous experience in this particular area to get the support they need to learn how to work in this environment and then to get a job. Finally, the Google IT certificate is articulated into at least three degrees from the University of London, Northeastern University, and the University of North Texas, giving these learners a leg up 
on getting their bachelor's degrees. At Coursera, we believe that gateway credentials are a path to digital jobs. And we're in the process of adding many more to our platform, as you can see here. As higher education digitizes, it's really important to reflect on what's different. The learning experience, obvious, in-person, synchronous, and scheduled, online, self-paced, and flexible. Now, what does that mean? If something is self-paced and flexible, the teacher can't be sure when the learner is going to do the learning and how connected that learning is. One learner might do five units in a single sitting. Another might take 10 minutes while they're sitting on the bus. And then another 10 minutes and then 20 minutes while they're cooking dinner. The instructor interaction in person is face to face. Although sometimes that face to face is a sage on the stage as we've all experienced. Online, there are live sessions and virtual office hours in some way that learning is more connected because it's often just one on one, the student with the uh, teaching assistant or the, the uh, faculty member and virtual office hours enable asynchronous learning of concepts. Hands on learning on campus labs and job experiences. Online virtual platforms. Now this works for many disciplines particularly those in data and technology, it doesn't work for all. I certainly wouldn't want someone to give me an injection who had only learned how to do it online. Cost, often, not always, but often in person is more costly because there are facilities, there are people who have to drive places, there are students who have to live places, and so on and so on and so on. Online, requires a computer and in some places just a mobile phone and it requires access to the internet or to cellular service. In addition to the differences in modality, there are also significant differences in the needs of learners in the online world. We have to move away from teaching everyone as if they're full-time students without jobs and work experience toward teaching adults with busy and complex lives. I look at this mostly as teaching youth versus teaching adults, pedagogy versus andragogy. The learner is much more dependent on the instructor, instructor, sorry, in pedagogy. And they're much more self-directed in andragogy, they're adults. Learner experience prior to the classroom is limited. And in andragogy, accumulated experience can be related to new learners, to new learning. What this means is that if you're teaching someone who's never had to pay the rent, who's never had a loan, and you're teaching them finance, their context is very, very different. Learner readiness to learn is also not always, but sometimes different. In pedagogy, it's based on biological growth and academic pressure. And in andragogy, it should be oriented to the task development for social roles. What that means is adults who are taking courses really want to learn that material because they need it for their job tomorrow or their new career. Learner has a very different time perspective in pedagogy and andragogy for people who are starting out, it's the future application of knowledge. And for people who are working, it's a problem centered orientation, the immediate application of knowledge. Learners are very available when all they're doing is learning. And they're very unavailable when they're adults with jobs and kids and houses to manage. The instructor transmits information and skills and pedagogy and a facilitate facilitator helps learners acquire information and skills in andragogy. These differences are something I encourage everyone to think about as they think about how to create online learning materials. It's not just putting your face-to-face -face course online. So in summary, 
There are six trends, in my estimation, driving the future of higher education as it digitizes. I believe, and I think many agree, that blended is going to become the norm. Both students and teachers will be on and off campus. It's not going to be as extreme as the lockdown period, but I don't believe it's ever going to go back to all students in front of teachers. According to an April 2020 study in Russia, online and blended instruction produce similar learning outcomes as traditional in-person instruction at substantially lower cost. That means you've got to have online content, including fully online degrees. According to a Simpson Scarborough study, 15% of college students who, when given the option to finish their degrees online or complete in person, want to finish online. There are probably 220 million students enrolled in higher education. This means that at least 33 million of them could elect to finish their degrees online. Every university is going to build, buy, and augment online content and data is going to make learning more personalized and effective. Of course, I talked a few seconds ago about price. Once you start online, there will definitely be pressure on tuition. People don't want to pay when they don't have a facility to go to. 67% of students expect to pay much less in tuition and fees for online learning if the campus can't be reopened. Also, because of unemployment, people who are going to have less to spend. What this means is that you can say, okay, we're not going online because we can't get as much tuition, but you might have to go online and think about how to provide education more cost effectively. Because if, you, if you're too expensive, students will choose to go somewhere else. With unemployment soaring, certainly in vast regions of the world, job relevant education is going to become a must. According to Gallup, only 34% of US college students feel they have the knowledge and skills needed for the workforce. Having those knowledge and skills available on campus, online, are going to become mission critical to most institutions. Students are going to demand skill-based, hands-on learning that comes from universities and industry. Lifelong learning is going to happen at work. People are not going to give up their jobs to continue learning and people are going to have to continue learning to keep their jobs. Many, many employers offer tuition assistance in some parts of the world, but sometimes students are going to do it on their own because they want a career change that their employer is not going to give them unless they learn more. Since people are learning and working at the same time, they are definitely going to learn in smaller chunks. Projects, certificates, small learning components. Learners prefer bite-sized learning, particularly when they're adults in jobs with career, with uh, families and homes to take care of. It's really an exhilarating time to be part of higher education and its digital transformation. We've come a long way and we have so much further to go. I look forward to the journey ahead and I hope you do too. Thank you so much.